So it is true that you don't have to study thousands of openings or many gambits for you to play like Hikaru or Magnus. So yesterday I came across this beautiful article on leeches.org where Grandmaster Godima was discussing Hikaru's Blitz repertoire. And before I show you what I learned from this article and how I applied the lessons in my real games in order to rise from 2150 to 2200. First of all, allow me to point out one or two points that I found useful in this article. So the main argument in this article was that one or two opening repertoires can work quite well together. You don't need to study dozens of these things. Of course, it's very important to study as many openings as you can just for the sake of knowing and familiarizing yourself with certain lines. But when it comes to real competition, guys, trust me, all you need is just one or two opening repertoires for each color. Just ensure that you specialize in that opening repertoire and familiarize yourself with as many lines as you can. For example, the author here noticed that Hikaru likes playing the knight to f3 and b3 lines when he's having white pieces like most of the times. Yes, he does play other openings as well a few times, but most of the times it's either Hikaru begins with knight to f3 which is the zuka third opening or kind of the reti followed by pawn to b3 or vice versa and with black pieces the writer of this article noted that hikaru likes combining three opening repertoires so he might start with the modern defense then slowly but sure start combining some Karukan ideas and sometimes against d4, he combines the modern defense and the Dutch defense. Sometimes he can start with the Dutch and then later on in the middle game goes back to the modern defense lines. So according to the writer's findings, which I concur, the logic of the concept for black is that you can combine two repertoires if you want or one repertoire is enough. This will help you avoid dangerous attacking systems as well. And the whole idea is to get a pattern based repertoire where memorization of forced lines is not required instead of playing everything. For example, today you are playing the two knights defense. Tomorrow you are playing the Karakan defense. The other day you switch to the Sicilian defense. This is what average players do oftentimes and it doesn't work well. Anyway, and the logic of the concept for white according to the writer of this article was that the focus is on making similar moves and getting a solid position. And the strategy is awaiting for the opponent's mistakes. And this is true. When you specialize in one opening repertoire, combining that repertoire with another similar opening repertoire, you will start getting similar middle game positions that look familiar to you. That way it will be easier for you to know what to do in the middle game since you are now an expert of such kinds of positions. So. How did I put this into practice? What I did was I played about 15 games, if I'm not mistaken, using one or a combination of two similar opening repertoires with black pieces. And with white pieces, I only used one opening repertoire, the Zukatot opening. Sometimes I was combining the Zukatot ideas and the Reti ideas, which you are going to see in a moment. And that helped me to rise from 2150 to 22 in just a few minutes like 30 or 20 minutes because I was breaking in between and here we go so I just picked some games that I thought were exciting and fit for YouTube consumption anyway this is one random game that I played during my study and all these were bullet games by the way so I just want to make a point with white pieces I was starting with knight f3 and in this game my opponent played pawn to g6. Now I should mention to say the games were not perfect but the fact that I was playing with higher rated opponents and still was able to confuse them that is enough. I don't care what stockfish would think so these were my own strategies against humans. After pawn to g6 I played c4 then my opponent continued with his fianchero setup. So you can see this is kind of the English, ratey, whatever you can call it. But this is just one opening that I know from the bottom of my heart. Knight c3 is what I played. Then instead of castling short, Black decided to trade off his d pawn for my c pawn. And I was cool with that. I don't have any weaknesses, by the way, except these. 
So I had to add a defender so that after this trade, I can take back with my B pawn, which happened in the game. Now you can see everything is cool. My pawns are well fixed. Castle shot was played. I played h4. The idea was very simple. First of all, what should I even do in this position? Queen b3. Okay, that's fine. Pawn to c4. A4 is also a well advanced prophylactic move. But you know what? Speaking of bullet, you always want to be the first one to launch an attack. So I started with h4. The idea is very simple just to mess up black spawn structure on the king side, which happened after knight c6. I played h5. I just want to open up the h file for my king's rook. Bishop g4 was played. I don't even know what this is. So I just took on g6. What else? After fg, I played knight g5. Just a bullet move to attack the undefended pawn or try to you know cause some weakness bishop h5 was played i could have taken by the way if i wanted but i played queen b3 check knowing that i already have this move by the way the whole idea was to give black one more chance to blend out maybe with a move king g7 which happened in the game after which i played knight e6 check which came as a family folk and all this was played in 18 seconds by the way so on the next move i just grabbed the free queen and went on to win the game as shown on the board i mean at this point it's just a matter of technique i'm up a full queen and i don't even know why my opponent didn't resign but this is how the game ended i just needed to find the right strategy to finish off my opponent like this so my main interest is in the opening stage i want you guys to see how i was using the same things same opening repertoires to beat everyone i met on leeches all right next game with black pieces i was playing the modern defense which begins with point to g6 by the way against e4 or against d4 and you will see that sometimes i was combining the ideas with a perk defense king's indian and whatever <laughs> so if you want to know the difference between the modern defense, the king's Indian defense and the Pierce defense or the perk defense, I suggest that you watch the video that has popped up in the card above. But just to let you know a little bit, the main difference between the Pierce defense and the modern defense is the development of our king's knight. Okay, so we delay knight f6 in the modern defense and most of the times we like developing this knight on e7 instead of going knight f6 anyway so e4 g6 which is the modern defense that magnus likes playing by the way d4 was played and then i played bishop g7 what else do i know knight f3 then i played d6 so you can see how i am delaying to play knight to f6 i don't want to block the vision of my dark squad bishop so at this point, I don't even know how I'm going to develop my knight, but maybe someday it's going to sit on h6 or e7. Watch. Bishop e3 was played. I played knight d7. I'm just delaying the development of this knight again. Bishop d3. I played pawn to c6, trying to free up my queen and also preparing for pawn to b5. Still delaying knight to f6. Pawn to c3 was played. Then I played e5 because that's what you always want to do in the Pierce defense or in the modern defense. You always want to play this move before your opponent does. Knight bd2 was played. Then I played queen c7 supporting my e5 pawn indirectly. D takes e5, d takes e5, then castle short. You can see my pawns are still fixed. Then only by this time did I develop my king's knight on e7. So you can see not even on f6 even though that was also fine. But why on e7 this time? Because I'm preparing for pawn to f5 in the near future. Knight b3 was played. I don't know the strategy behind that, but I just castled short. After queen c1, I played f5, ready to go f4 next. But white took, I took back. I should have taken back with my g pawn if I wanted, by the way, and go pawn to f4, but I just decided to take with my knight. These are my own strategies. Not the perfect ones, though. Bishop takes, g takes. Then after bishop h6, I just played f4 because that's what I was taught. Bishop takes, king takes, knight g5. In a split second, I saw that white wanted to play knight e6 check and win my queen. Because this was going to be a triple folk once again, like the one I delivered in the previous game. So you can see again, chess is all about pattern recognition. My opponent played knight g5 and I remembered the pattern that I had in my previous game with white pieces where I delivered this triple attack on my opponent. So to prevent this, I played knight f6 because now my light squad bishop is eyeing that square. Queen c2 was played. Maybe I bowling my h7 pawn, but that's well protected. So I played h6, chasing that knight away. And then I played 
bishop f5, pinning that knight to the queen. I was making these moves in one or two seconds, by the way. F3 was played. I just simplified the game. Maybe not the best that I could have done, but what else do I know? And this is another thing that you need to learn, you guys. Never be afraid of exchanging queens given a chance. Look, nobody is ready to trade off their queen. And the moment they refuse, you find that they'll blunder in one way or another. I played queen g3, sacrificing my knight because I saw a possible quick checkmate based on my opponent's rating and style of playing. He took, I took back. Then what else? I was ready to go. Pawn to f3 next, given a chance. So this time my opponent begged for a queen trade, but I said nope, because next is checkmate. Not saying this was the perfect game, but we are humans. I mean, we make blunders and mistakes. That was a terrible blunder. I was only interested in showing you the opening. Next game, with white pieces, I started with knight f3. Again, the zuka taught my opponent played d5. Then I played c4. What else do I know? Again, the rate opening my opponent took back and then I played e3 by the way I could have taken this pawn in many different ways for example queen a4 check and then grab that pawn for free or just equalizing material I played e3 and after knight f6 I took that pawn after e5 instead of taking right away I wanted to punish my opponent this way because there's no better way to you know defend against this attack my opponent played bishop e6 theoretically speaking you take with your knight here but i just took with my bishop so that i can just simplify everything like this then on the next move i played queen a4 check c6 was played then castle short what else knight bd7 I played d4. Again, this is another move you need to keep in mind. It's not just about flank pawns and sidelines like this. You need to hit on the center given a chance. You always want to be the first one to dominate the center. So after ed, I took back, then black castled long, and then I played g3 preparing for bishop f4 next because I just want to have total control over that diagonal. Knight b6 attacking my queen. I played queen b3. Queen takes d4 was played. I developed my bishop with an attack. After queen d5, I said no to that queen trade because my queen is more powerful than my opponent's queen. King b8, knight c3, attacking the queen, queen f3. And then I noticed that my opponent's queen was not defended. His peace coordination was poor. So if I could find one way of winning this queen, it was going to be great. And that's why immediately... I played this tactic on my opponent and I knew my opponent was not going to see this. Knight a4, as if I just wanted to simplify the game, you know, trade knights. I knew my opponent was going to take, but one thing I knew he wasn't going to see was bishop takes a7. Check. Why sacrificing my bishop? Because now I finally take the queen which was undefended. That's why peace coordination is very important in chess. The game went as follows. I just want to finish off my opponent as quickly as I can and that's what happened. And that's what happens in bullet. Next game, this time my opponent played d4 and what else do I know apart from pawn to g6 or knight to f6. c4 was played. Now sometimes I like playing the Budapest but just to keep everything in the spirit of the modern defense or the king's indian defense i played g6 west indian defense knight c3 was played then i went on to fiancero my bishop and castle short by this time i should have played pawn to d6 but i didn't have that time which is why my opponent played pawn to e5 so i just retreated my knight but d6 was coming anyways and i like this because i'm just one move away from opening up the position bishop f4 i took and bishop takes I played knight f6 because I didn't want to exchange bishop so early. Bishop e2, knight c6, and then pawn to d5. I just took the bishop. My opponent didn't have to do this and let me take his bishop pair. Knight takes e5. I remembered one tactic in this position where we take the knight somehow, but I was a little bit late because white in this position had knight takes f7, but I was just going to take back with my rook. Anyways, my opponent missed this. So he just took the knight, I then took the knight on e5, then bishop g4. Ah, I just took the b2 pawn. After rook b1, I retreated my bishop, and then the game went as follows. By the way, after bishop takes c8, queen takes c8 was going to be a blunder due to knight takes e7 check, and I was going to lose my queen for free. So you always need to be very careful and know what you're doing. I took back with my rook so that there is no knight takes e7. 
The knight went back. Then I played rook c7. Just want to put my rook in front of my queen and start playing normal chess from here. I grabbed a free pawn, by the way. Next, I want to grab the c4 pawn for free. Rook b1 was played, but... I just took the rook and went for this simplification. I thought my pawn structure was nice for the end game. And from here, it was just a matter of technique and finding the right time to meet my opponent. So I played a few more games and was able to reach 2200 in a few minutes with only one opening repertoire, which I highly suggest that you guys should try. No need to play every opening out there. You will just confuse yourselves. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video, you guys. And let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you don't have what to say, just comment. Thank you, Casper, because you're doing it for the algorithm. And that's how you support my channel. Thank you so much. And remember to check out my courses at www.casperchess.com. Also join me on Patreon where I post detailed studies that I can't post on YouTube due to some restrictions. Hope to see you soon in my next video. Until next time, bye bye.